For all the talk about economic recovery and exit strategies, we still have not yet dealt with the fundamental problem that got us into the crisis in the first place, and that is debt. That's according to my guest today, Michael Pento. He is the senior market strategist of Delta Global Advisors. Uh, Michael, as we were talking in the earlier segment, you made the point we need to, to either pay down all this debt or eradicate this debt or deal with, with the tremendous amounts of debt levels that we have in this country. And you think that the day of reckoning is coming sooner rather than later. I do. I do. And I'll tell you this. My opinion doesn't really matter, Aaron. I look at math. So the math tells me we're in a serious problem. I would put it the maximum duration of, uh, of having a quiescent market is around four years. But it could be much sooner than that than we hit the, the debt wall, which I'm worried about. And let me go through some of the numbers. Well, before you do so, when you say hit the debt wall, that means we're Greece? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, but worse because we're the, we have the world's reserve currency. So, you know, everybody doesn't own euros. Everybody owns bonds and dollars. So when we hit that debt wall, it's going to be extremely, extremely pernicious. Okay. And quickly. So let's go through some numbers so people understand that I'm not just pulling things out of my hat. Okay? So the national debt, the gross national debt, just eclipsed $13.1 trillion. The publicly traded debt, which is a very important part of that debt, it's, it's, it's ex-intra-governmental obligations, just reached $8.5 trillion. It was 7.5 last year. By 2015, it's going to reach $14 trillion. So it's basically going to almost double in six years. So from, from the signing of the Declaration of Independence to 2009, it took us all those years to run up $7.5 trillion in debt. And we're going to hit $14 trillion in 2015. But here's, here's where the rubber meets the road with the numbers. Okay, so last year we took in about $2.1 trillion in revenue. The interest payment on the debt by 2015 will be and depending on interest rates, even if they stay quiescent, will be about $1 trillion. So even if we grow revenue by 50%, you're talking about the interest on the debt being around 30%. 30% of all government revenue is going to pay interest on the debt. What do you think that does to our bond market? It leads to, in my humble opinion, unfortunately, a dollar crisis and a bond market crisis. And that's why gold refuses to go down. Right. I, I, obviously, there's no debating what gold is doing, but a lot of people, including yourself and others, have come on here and said the dollar is going to collapse, funders are going to stop buying treasuries. They've been saying it for some people for two years, for five years, right. or for ten years. Right. At least right now, right. there's still tremendous demand out there tremendous, for treasuries. Tremendous. How do you explain that, and why will it, quote unquote, suddenly stop happening? Well, you know, it almost sounds like someone telling me in 2006 that home prices can never fall on a national level because they never have. And I was calling for a housing bubble for three years. I said, we're building a tremendous bubble. I actually shorted Fannie Mae in the, in the 60s and actually lost money. It kept, going it kept, up, kept right? on going up. So, you know, I mean, timing is always very difficult to, uh, to get down and nail down accurately. But you just look at the math behind what's going to happen in the next few years, and you have to ask yourself, will China and Russia and Japan and, and the Eurozone continue to support our spending habits? And, and the, ch the odds of that are very, very low. And you have to at least factor those very low odds into your portfolio decisions. So should we be following the austerity path that the Europeans have gone down? I think we need to drastically cut spending, and we're doing the exact opposite. Right. So I would think if 30% if, if of our revenue is going, going to be interest payments... Interest payments on the debt. What does that leave? Right. So we're going to have to significantly else. raise taxes as well, in addition to cutting spending, which is well, what they're doing in Europe. Well, it's what they're doing in Europe. Now, I, I am not a, a tax a, a revenue enhancer because... A, an increase in revenue doesn't actually accompany an increase in rates. So I can raise your taxes to 90% and you stop working. Right. So you're not going to get any more revenue. How about lowering taxes to engender economic growth and dr dramatically cutting spending? You're going to have your recession slash depression in the short term. But on the other side of that, you're going to have a viable uh, uh, currency, a viable bond market, and a viable economy. This way, borrowing debt to bail out debt is a prescription for disaster. And that's where we're headed. It's very interesting. Hey, hey, why do you have to take this? These, this tough medicine now, when the economy, to your own point earlier, you think is on shaky ground. It is. If we cut back on government right. spending right now, won't that assure us of tipping into well, a, a worse recession? It, it will in the short run. But what's, what's your alternative? I mean, Geithner is doing a victory lap today on Capitol Hill, talking right. about how he bailed out the, the economy and the country. What he did was destroy the whole uh, budget balance, the, uh, the, the balance of the United States budget. That's what he destroyed. He destroyed our balance sheet. The public sector's balance sheet is destroyed.
So I don't think that's a reason to take a victory lap. Right, but obviously you can never talk about the counterfactual. If they hadn't done TARP and some right. of the other measures took the right. fall of 2008, you know, some people tell you there, we wouldn't have an economy. We wouldn't be here talking about this. We'd all be foraging for food and, you know, <laughs> going on subsistence farming or something, you know. Uh, okay. Would it be a very, very difficult period in the short term? Absolutely. But we've kicked the can down the road, but we've, the can has gotten much, much bigger. So when we do have to eventually address this debt situation, who's going to bail out? Who's going to bail out the United States? It's not going to be Greece. It's not going to be Spain. And it's not going to be the IMF. We just have too much debt. It's going to be the Federal Reserve with their printing press. And I can assure you that's going to be more painful than addressing the, the problem of debt today. Right. So you say take the pain now. Take the pain. Rip off the Band-Aid. Take the pain now. All right, Mike. Thanks very much. You're welcome.